Our next topic is going to be, what if I'm not given it in standard form? How do I get it back to standard form so that I can use the characteristics to solve whatever the question is asking me for? So if I'm given this, uh, x squared minus 8x minus y is equal to negative 18, and they tell me to write it in standard form. Then I need to know information about, and then it wants us to graph it. So, graph it. so in order to graph it, I need to know the vertex, the focus, axis symmetry, directrix, and any other characteristics I might need, like the p-value being positive or negative. So, how do I even know this was a parabola? We're not quite into the topic where we can use information to solve what kind of conic it is. So in the future, you know, you're going to learn something called the uh, determinant or you're going to recognize patterns because you've seen enough conics. At this point, what do you notice? What's going on with your X and your Y? Are they just X and Y? Are they X squared and Y? Are they Y squared and X? Are they X squared and Y squared? So that's kind of a concept you need to get in the habit of testing. Today, we know it's a parabola because we're in the video about parabolas, but there's another reason I know it's a parabola, because only x is squared and the y is not. Because x is squared, I also know it's more than likely a vertical uh, parabola, but I need to triple check in, in standard form. Of course, I need to triple check in standard form. So the first thing I need to do is actually convert it. So that's going to be, okay, all the stuff I talked about, that's going to be a little bit of algebraic manipulation. So let's jump into that. And here you can see why do we need to algebra algebraically manipulate it? Because I need it to look like this formula. So some notes about how I'm going to manipulate it. What do I see? Well, my X is on the left side, so I want to keep this buddy and this buddy on the left side because those are my X's. But my Y is on the right side, so I actually want to move this guy over. And my negative 18, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's probably related to my P value, but I want to triple check first. Okay, so... We need to isolate our variable, usually not the square. I'm so sorry. I usually have that on silent. Okay, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I moved my 18 to the left-hand side, and I moved my Y. And there's a reason why we went ahead and moved the 18, and you're going to see it in just a second. I, I could have left the 18 over there, but does that help me factor X squared minus 8X plus 18? And the reason I want to do that is because my information is usually in the format. I don't know what just happened there. My information is usually in the format of X minus H squared. And so if it's like this, then I need to get it to be its perfect it's perfect square. It's perfect factor. So can I break up 18 so there is a true factor? In fact, I can. It would be 16 plus 2. Okay, and so why did I do that again? I'm trying to show you that I need x squared, uh, the quadratic form that we're seeing right there. I need it to become a perfect square, x minus h squared. So I can adjust my 18, and I'm going to deal with that too by just moving it over. I don't really need to worry about it. This is the only thing I just factor. And again, you can see if it repeats, we're going to write it as x minus 4 squared. Ta-da! So I end up with this information. I don't need that plus 2, so I'm going to move it over. I could have moved it over earlier. And now I end up with this information. Voila, we are already in standard form. So we can write it like this. Now we can fill out our table, and does it look like this? Yes, it sure does. Uh, if I needed to make my life a little bit easier, I could have put this in parentheses and put a visible one right here so that I recognize what's going to be related to 4P. So I went ahead and did that. And now I can calculate my H, my K, and divide my coefficient of the non-squared quantity by 4 to get our P value. So that's exactly what I did. Went ahead and calculated all the rest of my information. And we got all this fantastic information. And we also know that our p-value is positive. So not only is it vertical, but it's vertical facing up. So since it asked us to graph it, we can go ahead and plug in that information. So I plotted my vertex. I plotted my focus. Proof, again, from the vertex, we went up. So that means our graph must also be going up. And then our axis of symmetry should cut straight through them. It did. And our directrix should be, in this case, since vert focus is up, directrix should be below the vertex and we should not touch it when we plot our parabola. And we did it. So proof, proof, proof. We hit all of our check marks. We now know how to write it in standard form. 
Okay, so we manipulate. You're going to have to deal with that perfect factoring. All year I've been saying you've got to know how to factor, guys. Okay, and we can prove, we can uh, check it on a graphing calculator. And if this is all you're doing when you're doing these questions is checking it on a graphing calculator, then I'm going to ask, how are you going to survive the non-calculator portion of the exam where it tests if you actually know it, not a calculator knows it. So we got it. Yay. Are you ready to try it yourself?